They came up really fast for a while, six to seven feet, two meters a century. Nothing like that's happening today, but the Everglades wasn't here. It was dry and windy and cool. Florida drained a massive wetland and biologists found what had been living under it and it was way more intense than anyone predicted. As the water disappeared, the ground started moving in ways that should not be possible in a healthy marsh. 120 meters. Florida was nothing like it is today. And those sediments that were left by that ancient sea. We are talking about thousands of creatures trapped in tiny pools and monsters hidden in deep burrows for years. This reveal changed everything we know about what lives in the river of grass. You will not believe what was slithering in the dark under those lilies. The crazy part is just how many secrets were hiding. Florida's Hidden Mud Monsters The first thing you have to understand is that the Florida Everglades is basically a giant, slow-moving river that people call the River of Grass. It covers millions of acres and acts like a huge filter for the whole state. But every now and then, humans have to step in and move the water around for restoration or maintenance. Recently, in a place called Stormwater Treatment Area 1 West, they did a massive drawdown. This is basically when they drain the water out of a specific area to fix the plants or clean the mud. But here is the catch. When you take away the water, you take away the cover. Biologists went out there expecting to see a few sunfish and maybe some trash, but instead, they saw the ground literally breathing. As the water reached only a few inches deep, thousands of fish were jammed into tiny puddles. This is what experts call a sudden reveal, and it is pretty wild to see in person. Among the native largemouth bass and bluegill, they found something much more annoying. There were pockets of armored catfish everywhere. These things are invasive and they are tough as nails. They have these hard, bony plates that protect them from birds and even some small gators. What most people do not realize is that these catfish actually dig deep into the banks of the wetlands. When the water was high, nobody knew they were there. But with the water gone, their burrows were exposed like Swiss cheese in the mud. These holes ruin the natural structure of the swamp and make it hard for native plants to grow. The biologists had to act fast because these trapped fish were running out of air. Thousands of fish can perish in just a few hours when the sun hits that shallow water. It creates a massive smell that you can detect from miles away. But get this, the armored catfish can actually breathe air for a short time, so they were just sitting there waiting for the scientists to find them. The district workers found that these invasive pockets were way bigger than they ever dreamed. It showed that our control efforts have a long way to go. Hands down, this was one of the biggest wake-up calls for the team in years. They realized the swamp was not just a home for fish, it was a hiding spot for monsters. The swamp was hiding more than just fish, and the next discovery was moving. History's Deepest Drain To really get why this reveal was such a big deal, you have to look back at how Florida was built. A long time ago, people thought the Everglades was just a big waste of space. Back in the 1880s, a guy named Hamilton Diston decided he was going to drain the whole thing to make room for farms. He spent a ton of money and moved millions of gallons of water out of the Kissimmee River Basin. Later on, around 1948, the government got involved and built a massive system of canals and pumps. This was the Central and Southern Florida project. It was supposed to stop flooding and give people water, but it ended up destroying over half of the original wetlands. Because we have been draining and filling these areas for over a hundred years, the wildlife has had to adapt in some pretty strange ways. Nowadays, we use things like stormwater treatment areas to try and clean the water before it hits the park. These are man-made wetlands that cover 57,000 acres. When they drain these areas today, they are essentially looking at a hundred years of ecological mistakes. The mud at the bottom holds a lot of history and a lot of chemicals like phosphorus from old farms. Basically, every time a biologist walks onto a drained wetland, they are stepping into a crime scene from the past. It is not that simple, though, because even though we messed it up, these areas are still full of life. Every drawdown gives us a chance to see if the multi-billion dollar restoration plans are actually working. Some people are obsessed with the idea of turning Florida back to how it was in the 1800s, but that is nearly impossible. We have built too many houses and roads in the way. Instead, we have to manage the water we have left very carefully. 
When the biologists found those invasive catfish burrows, it proved that just adding water is not enough. You have to know what is living in the mud or you will never win the fight to save the glades. The scale of the drainage projects is so huge that even a small mistake can lead to thousands of animals losing their homes overnight. The history of the water is deep, but the animals currently living there are even more dangerous. When the swamp runs dry. The crazy part is what happens when the water gets really low in the deeper parts of the swamp. During a project in the Picayune Strand, which is part of the big restoration plan, crews found something that made their skin crawl. They were clearing out old canals and draining the nearby marshes when they found deep burrows that did not belong to any native animals. These were the homes of Burmese pythons. These snakes can grow to be 20 feet long and they have been eating everything in sight for years. When the water is high, they are almost impossible to find because they hide in the thick grass and under the surface. But when the water vanished, their secret dens were wide open. Biologists from the United States Geological Survey rushed to the scene and found dozens of pythons hiding in these muddy tunnels. It was a massive win for the removal teams because they could grab the snakes without having to hunt through miles of tall grass. But it also showed a scary reality. The pythons are not just swimming around, they are literally living under the feet of everyone who visits the park. And that is putting it lightly. These snakes have caused a 90% drop in small mammals like rabbits and raccoons. Without those animals, the whole food chain starts to fall apart. The drainage revealed that the python problem is even deeper than we thought, quite literally. And get this, the snakes were not the only predators making a scene. As the water receded, it created something called a predator pit. This is when all the water in a big area pulls back into one or two deep holes. Suddenly, you have hundreds of alligators all crammed into a space the size of a swimming pool. They were snapping at each other and fighting over the thousands of fish that were stuck in the hole with them. Biologists saw territorial behavior that usually stays hidden underwater. It was like a buffet for the gators, but it also made them very easy targets for study. They also saw birds like wood storks and great egrets flying in from miles away to join the feast. It was a scene of total chaos in the mud. The predators were having a field day, but the water itself was hiding a silent poison. Poison in the mud. While the animals are the most exciting part of a drained wetland, the chemistry of the mud is what really keeps biologists up at night. When you drain a wetland, you expose the soil to the air for the first time in years. This causes the organic matter to break down and release stuff that usually stays buried. One of the biggest problems in South Florida is phosphorus. It comes from the fertilizer used on big sugar farms and it flows into the water. The plants in the stormwater areas are supposed to suck it up, but when you drain the area, that phosphorus can sometimes leak back out. This can fuel massive blooms of blue-green algae downstream in places like the Caloosahatchee River. These algae blooms are no joke. They create toxins that can make people sick and remove all the oxygen from the water. This leads to massive fish eliminations where hundreds of thousands of fish perish at once. The crazy part is that these events often happen right after a big drainage or dewatering project. In 2021, there was a huge issue at a place called Piney Point. They had to release 215 million gallons of contaminated water to stop a flood. That water was full of nutrients and it caused a massive red tide that lasted for months. When the biologists looked at the area after the water was gone, they found a wasteland of dead shells and poisoned mud. Another weird thing they found under the water were apple snails. These are not your average garden snails. The invasive ones are huge and they eat every green plant they can find. During a drawdown, biologists found thousands of their pink egg clusters stuck to the stems of dead plants. These snails are a major problem because they can carry a parasite called rat lungworm, which is dangerous to humans. It is not that simple to just pick them up and move them either. The drainage showed that these snails had spread much further into the protected areas than anyone realized. It is a constant battle between cleaning the water and accidentally letting the invaders win. The mud is full of toxins and invaders, but some people think we can still fix it. Healing the Hidden Wild Despite all the scary stuff found lurking under the mud, there is actually some significant good news coming out of these restoration projects. In 2023, a group of dedicated scientists reported that some of their most critical restoration sites are finally starting to rebound. 
by using controlled drawdowns, a process where water levels are intentionally lowered to mimic the natural dry seasons that the ecosystem evolved with, they managed to reduce invasive plant cover by a staggering 40%. The discovery was a breakthrough for the river of grass. They found that once the suffocating mud had a chance to dry out under the Florida sun and the invasive fish were physically removed, the native plants didn't even need to be replanted. They started coming back on their own from ancient seed banks buried in the soil. It was as if the swamp was just waiting for a breath of fresh air. Even more encouraging was the return of the little guys. They saw the reappearance of tiny creatures like native crayfish and grass shrimp. While they might not look like much, these organisms are the absolute base of the entire food web. If these small populations are thriving, it sends a ripple effect up the chain, meaning the wading birds, alligators, and larger predators actually have a fighting chance at a stable food source. The big takeaway from these drained wetlands is that we are learning more every single day. We now know that we have to look much deeper than just the shimmering surface of the water to truly understand the health of the Everglades. Biologists are now using the data from these reveals to create sophisticated maps of where the pythons and invasive walking catfish are hiding when the water gets low. This isn't just about counting fish, it's about tactical management. They are finding better ways to move water through the state so that we do not trigger massive fish eliminations every time a canal needs to be cleaned or a levee needs repair. It is a slow, grinding process that costs billions of dollars and requires constant political will, but the results are finally starting to show up in the muck. The Everglades is a notoriously tough place, and it has proven that it wants to survive. It just needs us to stop standing in its way. So here's the deal. We are standing at a crossroads where we can either let the invaders take over for good, or we can use these gritty discoveries to fight back. Every time Florida pulls the plug on a wetland for maintenance or research, we get a rare, unvarnished look at the truth of our environment. It is messy, it is sometimes scary, and it is always full of surprises. Without that look under the surface, we would be flying blind, throwing money at a problem we don't fully understand. The scientists are out there every day, battling the sweltering heat, the mosquitoes, and the waist-deep mud, trying to make sense of what they found at the bottom of these pools. It is hands down the most important environmental work happening in the state right now. The hidden world of the swamp is finally coming to light, and now that we can see it clearly, it is up to us to decide what happens next. If we keep finding these massive pockets of invaders every time we drain the swamp, is it already too late to save the real Florida? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the wild.